Hey, welcome back to the Box of Lads game channel. We're playing Thunderstone Advance. Let's crack on with our first turn and draw six cards. And this becomes our starting hand. On a turn, there's basically four things that you can do. We can look at our hand and look at the gold value in our hand. So we ignore everything. You know, all these other little numbers and stuff. All we're interested in is this number here. We've got a 2, a 2, a 0, 0, 0, 0. That's the gold value of our hand. So the gold value of our hand is 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay? That would mean that on our turn, one of the four things we can do is head off to the village and spend our 4 gold. The other thing we can do is we can look at... The stuff that's written down here and the amount of attack it gives us. This one gives us physical attack 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That's 4 physical attack. And, and it also says if we go to the dungeon and if equipped with a pole arm, draw a car. So the long spear is, and then you look at these, these little keywords here, is a weapon, it's a basic pole arm, okay? So if anything says, do you have a weapon? Yes, we do because this is a weapon. Do we have a pole arm? Yes, we do. Is, do we have a basic card? Yes, we do. All right, so this one says, if equipped with a pole arm, long spear is a type of, of pole arm, draw a card. All right, so you can look out for those kind of abilities. I'm not going to head to the dungeon. I'm going to head to the village. So you can go to the village, spend your gold value, or you can go to the dungeon and fight a monster. That's two other things you can do. The other things you can do is to say, look at your hand and say, well, you know what? I don't really like the cards I can do. So you can do something called prepare. And that means you don't go to the dungeon, you don't go to the village to buy anything. What you do is you take any number of cards from your hand. So let's say I decide I want to take these two and place them back on top of your deck and then discard everything else. You end your turn and then the next thing you do is draw your six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then you'll know that at least two of those are going to have four gold amongst them. Okay, so that's called prepare, right? And that's all you can do on your turn. The other thing you can do, and this is called resting, is just destroy one card from your hand, right? So this is discarding stuff, putting it in a discard pile. Destroying means removing it from the game. So I might say, well, I want to get rid of this card, I'm going to destroy it. I don't want to ever see it again. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm thinning out of my deck cards that I think aren't much use to me. Destroy it means remove it from the game and then discard the rest next turn and you draw six more cards. Okay, so that's resting. Alright, so it's slightly different to preparing. But let's go off to the village. I've got four gold. Let's, let's spend it. So for my turn, I'm going to go to the village with my hand that contains four gold. Now I'm going to look at all the cards here. Okay, this is the village. These are all the things that I can buy. And I've got four gold. Well, how much do each of these things cost? I can only buy one thing. So let's have a closer look. What I'm looking at is this little purse here, right, with numbers on. So this champion sword here has a purse with a number five in it. This costs five gold. This one costs six. This one's seven. I can't buy any of those. I've only got four gold. This Radiant Orb, though, this costs three. I could buy one of these. Or oh, this Curative Draft only costs three. I could buy one of those. So these are all the things I can buy with my four gold. There's nothing here, as it goes, that costs exactly four gold. So I'm going to have to buy something for three. And my options are, I can buy an Innkeeper, a Curative Draft, a Radiant Orb. I could buy a Long Spear and a Torch, they cost three each. But I'm going to buy this Curative Draft, and what I like about this card, this one I'm going to buy, is that it has a high gold value. So when this, now that I've bought it, it's going to go into my deck. And should I draw this card again on a later turn, it's going to add 3 gold value to my hand. And that's going to allow me to buy more powerful things. Alright, so I'm going, to, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to purchase this Curative Draft. And all I need to do to purchase it is just reveal my hand, reveal that I've got enough gold, and place the cards from my hand that I've used and the card that I've bought in the discard pile. Okay, let's call this the discard pile. Okay, and that's it. I've ended, I ended my turn. I can't do anything else. So you go to the village, you buy one card, that's it. 
Now, Innkeeper here, he does something special. He does allow you to buy an additional card on your turn. But normally, you just buy one thing. Okay, so that's our turnover. We've used our hand. We went to the village and we bought a curative draft. Now, this is where the solo rules differ from the regular game. At the end of every turn, you reveal the top card from the dungeon deck and populate the dungeon hall. And this guy appears in the deepest rank of the dungeon. And it's Tremor Fiend, a level 3 Earth Elemental. We place him here in rank 4. Now, to defeat this guy, we have to look at this top right and we see this number 8. That means we need to have a hand that generates 8 attack in order to defeat that Tremor Fiend. Alright, so if we remember on our turn, we can go to the village or we can go to the dungeon, prepare or rest. So if we chose to go to the, the dungeon, we need to have a hand that contained enough attack strength to defeat this 8. Now, our regulars, they gave us physical attack 1. Alright, so attack as a type as well, but it doesn't really matter what type of attack unless some of this text on one of these cards refers to it. So we might have a monster, for example, that says it's immune to physical attack. Yeah? So this would give us attack 1. So if we had 8 of these regulars in our hand, we could go off and defeat the Tremor Fiend. Alright, but some of these heroes are better. So, for example, the garrison, the page here, the level 1 garrison human fighter, has physical attack 2. Alright, so we would only need 4 of those to go and defeat that Tremor Fiend. Remember these levels of of heroes, so these are all level 1, these are level 2, this has physical attack 3, the level 3 is a garrison knight, he has physical attack 5. So you can see as we get through these cards and they become stronger, then our ability to fight monsters becomes stronger. Okay? We can only ever buy the top card here though, but we can level up using experience as we gain experience through the game. I'll show you that as and when it happens. But remember also this this darkness penalty. So this one's dark deep down in the dungeon. He's at rank four, and it has a minus four penalty. Okay, what that means is that if we had eight attack, right, we had enough cards to generate eight attack, it would actually be reduced by four down to four attack. Okay, if we had nine attack, it would get reduced down to five. Okay, so to actually defeat this tremor fiend of strength eight, we would need Taking into account the minus 4 here, we'd need 12 attack. But remember, we've got these things like uh, like torches, and they have this number here, this number 1 here. This means 1 light, so a torch gives 1 light. And what that means is, is it reduces the darkness by 1. All right? I'll show you when we get to the dungeon how we use light to reduce that penalty. For now, though, we're done. We've ended our turn. We begin the next turn by drawing the next 6 cards. So we should have a little bit more gold in here this time. Yeah. We don't have um, enough attack to go and to hit that Tremor Fiend. So we're going to go back to the village again and try and power up our deck a little bit more. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six gold to spend this time. So options are a little bit better. What we're going to spend our six gold on. Well, I quite fancy buying one of these heroes. This is the garrison page. It's the most expensive. He's cost seven, so we can't buy this one. Tower is the tower apprentice is six. Blade mage striker five. The druid sacrist six. I think we'll go and buy this um, this druid sacrist. I think she's quite good. So we'll buy this this hero, this elf cleric from the village. We'll recruit her. Put her in our discard pile along with our hands that we've now used. Okay, ended our turn, so what do we do next? We go and place another monster in the dungeon. So we draw another monster, this time it's a level 2 black flock assassin, and he's going to go in rank 4, so everything shuffles up one. Alright, so our monsters are, are progressing their way out of the dungeon. At this point, let's explain the objective of the game. There's a couple of numbers down here, all right, on each of these monster cards. This number on the left, this is experience points. This gives us two experience points. Now, to level up one of our heroes, we need to pay their, their level up cost in experience. So, for example, a regular here has 
a two in the bottom left. That what it means is we can pay two experience that we've gathered from defeating monsters and level up a regular to any one of these heroes at the village. Or we can level up, if we had one of these in our hand, the garrison page here, level one, costs two experience to level up to level two. Okay, so that's what experience is useful for leveling things up. We can also use experience when our familiar comes out. I'll show you how you can use experience to, to trigger your familiar. But the other number on here on the right hand side is our victory points. Each of these monsters here is worth four victory points. And that's the objective of the game, is to get as large a number of victory points as possible playing solo. And if you're playing multiplayer, then more victory points than your opponents. Right, so defeating each one of these would reward you with four victory points. Weaker monsters are going to have lower values, stronger ones, higher values. Okay? The difficulty playing solo is these monsters are going to keep marching out of the dungeon. So what happens when something gets to rank one and falls off the end? It raids the village. And for every monster that raids the village, it disappears from the game, but it goes in a little stack of monsters that have raided the village, and their experience point value, this four here, will count against us. So if at the end of the game we got 20 victory points worth of monsters, but this guy had raided the village, then we reduce our score from the 20 victory points we have by four. We'd only end up with 16 victory points. Okay, so the more of these guys that escape because we haven't defeated them, the more our score at the end is going to go down. So potentially you could end up with a negative score. Right, that's the monster moved up. Now we need to draw six cards, but our, our deck is empty. So what do we do? We grab our discard pile, we give it a shuffle, and then we can draw six more cards. Alright, so we're recycling, and those cards that we've purchased now stand a chance of coming out. Alright, so let's draw our six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. See what we get. We've got a drill, so that's one, two, physical attack one, that's three, four. Still not enough to go off to the dungeon, so let's look at our gold value. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight gold, much better. Now I've got enough for this. This garrison page, uh, it costs seven, right? So that's the cost of seven, and this guy's pretty strong. This number here on the left is his strength, and that means that he can carry heavier weapons. Our weapons here, they have this strength figure too, and that's the strength required to carry this weapon. So the long spear has three, Vulcan Arbalest three, the Labrys 6 and the Champion Sword 6. So we need a, a hero with strength 6 to carry these two heavy weapons. Happy with that. Okay, let's end our turn there. And move everything down in the dungeon. You can see we're getting close. What have we got here? Leonin Shredder. We're getting close to having the dungeon filled. So we want to start trying to get in there soon. Okay, let's draw back up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, one, two, three, four, still no good. These are strength eight, eight, five. And obviously that new one's right back there in the darkness. We've only got one torch. So it's back to the village. And we've got one, two, three, four, five gold to spend. Okay. Let's buy one of these swords then. It's a bit of a risk because I've only got one hero who can carry it. But, I don't know, I've got five gold. It gives me physical attack plus four. It's worth a gamble. Okay. Now, we've got a monster in rank one. And an eruptor, a level three monster, comes out. Let's skip back to... The tremor theme though, and have a quick look, because he's got something on here called Breach. Breach is an action that this monster takes. This Black Flock Assassin had something called Raid. Raid was active the moment this card came into the dungeon. It said if any ambushes are in the hall, the active player destroys one hero. 
as it goes, when Black Flock Assassin came out, there were no ambushes, so we didn't do anything. But Breach, this activates when a monster hits rank 1. And as soon as a monster hits rank 1, which this one has now, because it's been forced along by Eruptor coming out, it says destroy the top card of each spell stack and move this monster to the highest rank. The highest rank being rank 4. So we're going to take him, push him up to rank 4, which is going to shuffle everything else down. So he's gone back into the depths of the dungeon and destroy the top card of each spell stack. And that means, basically means is that our ability to learn spells has been reduced slightly. Remember there's 8 in each village deck and now there's going to be 7 in each spell stack. We've only got two spells as it goes, but one Royal Summons and one Mass Teleport are now forever removed from the game. Okay, let's end our turn there, and I think we'll end this episode here. Join me next time, and we'll see if we can't take on that dungeon. Bye for now.